and welcome back to another episode of the Summer of Me. Um, we are picking back up after kind of a downer episode last week. You know, we talked about breakups and I am thriving out here. I would like you guys to know I cut 21 inches off my hair uh, since you've seen me last and uh, it felt like I needed a fresh start. If you're not watching the YouTube video, I am just, you know, moving my head back and forth, just bobbing along all day long. Um, and I, uh, so many of you guys have like reached out on social media and been like, how are things? How are you feeling? And I'm just getting through the days, getting through the weeks. And every day is a little bit easier, a little bit more productive. And it is a new month, which is always like a helpful fresh start for me. You know, I love a fresh start. First of the month, I have a whole episode about all the things I do and you bet your bottom dollar I did them this month. Um, so I'm feeling good. I'm feeling focused and, um, excited to get into the holidays, you know? It's the Burr months, as they say. Um, this is like my busiest time for work, busiest time with the kids. There's just like so many things going on. There's like three school breaks from October to the end of the year. And I'm like, do you guys actually like, do we wanna go to school? Do we just, <laughs> should we just take the rest of the year off? Like, let's just chill. Um, so anyways, however, I did find myself with five days of no kids and <laughs> nobody. <laughs> And I stumbled into a wonderland of rom-com and I cannot, we're, we're, we are dishing, we are diving in, we are going all in to um, the new show on Netflix called Nobody Wants This. I just, I'm speechless. I, I'm not speechless. I'm literally never speechless. <laughs> However, I, we have to discuss, like we have, I, I have, <laughs> I don't have very many people to talk to about this show. My friends are like, oh, whatever. I'm like, no, we have to discuss we have to get into the nitty-gritty of this show if you watch the OC back in the day like Seth Cohen you um it is truly like doing something magical for every bone in my body every piece of my heart it's reviving my <laughs> I, I think I'm gonna become Jewish honestly <laughs> like I feel like maybe that's the next move um listen Baylor was a boy <laughs> clearly when he was born, but had he been a girl, his name was going to be Summer. After Summer from the OC, this is how much I loved this show. So Seth Cohen has always had a very special place in my heart. Um, Adam Brody, as he's the formerly known, which by the way, can we just talk about the fact that he married Leighton Meester from Gossip Girl? It's like every world possible that you could collide has done so. I did not know this until I <laughs> admittedly went on a Seth Cohen deep dive um, this week and found everything you could know about Adam Brody you know, what can I say? Podcast research. <laughs> Anyways, this show, you guys, is so good. So first things first, it's called Nobody Wants This. It's on Netflix. It's 10 episodes. It just came out like, I don't know, a few weeks ago or something like that. And it is binge worthy in every way if you love a rom-com. I have always been like, <laughs> I asked somebody the other day, I was like, do you like rom-coms? And she's like, well, I'm a girl. So like, obviously, um, but really I, rom-coms have always been it for me. Like that is the only genre of a show I really want to watch. I'll take the sad ones. P.S. I love you. Anybody? My favorite rom-com of all time is my best friend's wedding. That is like my ultimate number one movie, but like the holiday, I could go on and on. We could, we honestly, maybe we just have a podcast episode where we, we just talk about all the rom-coms when Harry met Sally, you've got mail, like all the nineties classics. And then you like move into like uh, how to lose a guy in 10 days, Benny, Benny, boo, boo. Like they are all so good. And they just revive my sense of like romanticism and they're just fun to watch. They're easy. They are not stressful. I do not like suspense. I do not like to question what's going to happen. Like I will, I can Google the ending. I will Google the ending. If there's like any, any vial of suspense in anything, I'm like, I'll just look it up so that I can actually sit here and enjoy the process of getting to that place with a rom-com. It's like the anticipation of it is so so good. It's like foreplay, if you will. Anyway, so I have always been a diehard rom-com fan. And so I saw the show and I was like, I feel like we have to watch, we, me and Harry, the dog, have to watch the show. So Saturday I had no plans and I was like, I, I need something to do. And I opened my Netflix and I was like, it just, it was a match made in heaven. And I binged all 10 episodes in one sitting. I don't even think I checked my phone, which is a record for like seriously, however many hours that took. And I watched it and I was like, there are takeaways. There are massive takeaways from this show. The girl who created this show, her name is Erin Foster. She, it's kind of based on like her love story. She married a Jewish man. They're like, it talks about their whole story. Her dad is David Foster, who's a musician anyways. And so these, like, I also did like a deep dive on the sisters and 
the whole thing. Um, but I was like, there are so many incredible takeaways from the show. One of the things that I have always found like frustrating about rom-coms, even though I love them, is that like, it's not realistic. Like, okay, is Matthew McConaughey really gonna like sweep you up off of, out of a taxi and like drive you in his Vespa out to the shore and like just the, the shower scene in that movie is just every bit as romantic as you could want. Feels like home to me um, is the song that just feels like home. Oh, it's so good. It's so good. Um, anyways, it's kind of unrealistic. So what I loved about this show is that it is very realistic, but also is like such a healthy version of love. So here's a few things that I learned from Nobody Wants This. Um, number one, why a man who is emotionally mature or willing to work towards emotional maturity is worth waiting for. I don't really want to spoil the show too much because I know some of you guys maybe haven't watched it, which this is your homework. If you haven't watched it, pause the episode, go watch it and then come back to the episode because we, spoiler alerts across the board, but not fully, but it's a rom-com. It's predictable. They end up in love, obviously. Um, but anyways, he, so she basically is like telling him in the show, like, you can't, like, I, I don't, I feel all these ways and like, I'm too much for you essentially. And this man is like, absolutely not. Like, this is what I want. Like, tell me where you're at. Like, I'm, I'm here. Like I can handle this. I can handle all of this. I can handle all of you. And, um, he, like at one point she has like an, ick. she gets the ick, which we'll talk about in a second, because this is a whole podcast episode in and of itself, but she gets the ick and he's like, no, 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 no. You like me. Like you, you like me. You're just like trying to sabotage this for your own reasons. And like, you're going through other things and like, you're going to take it out on this relationship. And it just like shows his m emotional maturity and like also his confidence to be like, sit down, Joanne, like you like me. And like, we're going to make this work because we, we mutually like love each other. And I just think dating culture now is so transient and to be able to see somebody where it's like, no, I'm not like this. We have a connection. Like you're not walking away from me because I wore a blazer over my hoodie, which actually does happen to be just absolutely repulsive. <laughs> he made a joke about a youth pastor and I died, but I like, that's not a reason not to be with somebody is like, you know, or he said like a word that she didn't like or something like that. I do think X, I find X absolutely hilarious, but I think there's an, they create a massive problem in dating. And I think the older you are and, <laughs> If you've ever been married, you're like, listen, get used to a world of icks because that's just marriage in a nutshell. Um, anyway, so number one lesson from this show is like, it is so important to be with a man who is emotionally mature and like knows how to handle like all of your crazy, all of your too much. Like there are people out there that exist and they might be like, he's a little bit older in the show. He's been like with a girl for a long time and then like they end up like not working out. Like they break off their engagement or they don't actually get engaged. But it's this whole dynamic and I think, you know, oftentimes it's like, well, we want somebody like fresh out of the gate and like not experienced and all these things. But like the experience, I look at my life and I'm like, I have had so many experiences, whether it's marriage, dating, like long-term relationships, long distance relationships, all of these things. And like every single one of those relationships and experiences I've learned a significant about, I learned a significant amount from about myself and about my ability to relate to other people, just about the dynamics of dating and marriage and all of those things. So experience is a good thing and emotional maturity is, um, while it's not always easy to come by, it's important in a relationship. Number two is on the flip side, it is important to do the work for yourself. One of the, like my, the most profound scenes in this show is when he asks her like what her biggest fear is and she's like, oh, it's like a, fa a bad facelift. And he's like, bullshit, like I want like the real, and he's like telling her like, I want all of you. Like I wanna actually like, if we're gonna do this and be serious about it, he's defining the relationship, sex, it's so good. Um, but he's like, I want all of you. And she like has to turn around because she's like, I can't actually like face you when I say this. And she knows herself and she has done the work enough to be like, my biggest fear is being emotionally dependent on a man who I become too much for basically. And like the, the fact that like she can say that and knows that about herself and has done enough work to be like, I don't know. I'm just like, this just doesn't feel right. Or I just like, don't know how, like, I don't know why, like, I just don't like this. Or like, I have the ick. No, like she actually knows like what she's deep down afraid of. And I think a lot of that goes back to doing like inner child work and a lot of therapy and journaling and spending time alone and like figuring out like name, like we've talked, I talked about this in the last episode, like naming your feelings. What am I actually afraid of? What am I actually running from? What am I actually like, what is the root of why I'm feeling this way. And you cannot possibly be successful and 
honest and genuine in a relationship if you don't know who you are coming into and if you don't know your flaws and like your shortcomings and your needs really. And that is one thing I've experienced in like post-divorce. Like I kind of was like, holy shit, who am I? And this whole like summer of me experience and all that stuff, I was like, I don't actually know what I need or what I'm missing or like what I want from a partner. And it's taken me, I'm still working on it. I'm still getting to that place where I'm like, okay, if somebody comes in is like, what, what's your deepest fear? I don't know. I mean, it's being alone really and truly, but at the same time, like it takes so much work to get to the bottom of a lot of your issues. And so I love that she's also like very emotionally mature and um, has done the work to know who she is and how she's coming into this. So it takes two to tango. Obviously we've talked about that. Number three is why it's okay to change your mind. She, by the end of the episode, like they, they end up like trying to figure out how to work on it, but like they had tried to break up like a couple times throughout the show. And I think that it's like, everybody has this precedence of like, it's going to be so easy. Like there's this whole TikTok trend going around. That's like, um, <laughs> We talked about this on a different episode a little bit, but like the TikTok trend is like, tell me what your boyfriend did like after you started dating. And it was like, absolutely nothing. We absolutely nothing. We fell in love and like moved in together after three days of knowing each other and like all this stuff. And like, it's not always that easy. There are hiccups. There are like moments where you're like, this is not for me or this isn't going to work. He's a rabbi and I'm a like, you know, a girl who doesn't even believe in God. Like how, do, how is this possibly going to work? And all of these like, moments of doubt and you know I used to always say like I don't if somebody breaks up with me like get I'm never gonna get back together with them like if they don't want to be with me the first time like they don't want to be with me at all, be with me at all and while that has like gone back to bite me in the ass a couple times it's also just again knowing that like life is complicated situations have dynamics that you can't always know out of the gate and um sh they both like demonstrate in the show like it's okay to change your mind and it's okay to be like no this is never going to work and be like well actually hold on that was the best kiss of my life like how do we make this work um so I thought that that was just like a good theme throughout the show that we can take into our lives it's okay to change your mind friendships it's okay to change your mind marriage it's okay to change your mind dating kids you can't really fucking change your mind I'm really sorry about that but you are stuck with those little things um there is no changing your mind um okay we are talking about the ick. This is truly like a podcast episode I've wanted to do for a long time. And I think that it's like, it will be best served with a guest. I have a couple guests in mind, but the ick episode will be coming because <laughs> again, I find it so funny. My, let me just tell you like a couple of my icks. If you don't know what an ick is, if you're like, well, I've been married for 18 years. I don't know what an ick is. It's basically anything that your partner does where you're just like, Ugh, like stop or just it's like a little bit cringy. I just learned the word chuggy yesterday. Um, I don't know that that fully applies, but <laughs> a new word for your vocabulary. Anyways, it's just like something that somebody does. So here's something that's like the ick for me is if a man has like childbearing hips, like men do not need hips. I don't think that they need to have like these big hips. And then they're like, it's like men with a pear shaped body is an absolute ick. Can they do anything about that? Absolutely not. One of the icks they talk about in the show is like, She's like, ah, I got the ick after I watched him like chase a ping pong ball across the room. And it's like, well, he's a human. Like he's gonna playing ping pong. Like he's going to have to. But it's like these things that are so outlandish. <laughs> She's like, yeah, when he runs and his backpack like claps along his back. <laughs> Another ick that I have is like when a guy eats too much, it's just like, why? Like you don't need to overeat. Like it's, and then they're like, oh, I'm so full. It's like, fuck, no. Like you ruined the whole thing. It, that is such an ick to me. But I want to talk about this because I think that a lot of times you watch like dating culture, you want like, and I think that's why they brought this into the show because it's such a thing. You, anytime you like scroll on TikTok or anything and this girl's like, oh my God, he, I got the ick because he did this or that. And it's always like dumb little things. I just want to set the record straight. You, when you marry somebody, you will have icks every single day. I remember m m being married to my ex-husband. This is no shade because like, he's not a bad person, but like, Genuinely, he would like sit and like eat his bowl of cereal and then he would like slurp the milk. One time I I had an impulsive thought that I actually acted on and I flipped the bowl up like into his face and like got milk everywhere. I was like, stop it. Stop doing that. Like I, you're giving me the ick. It was just like this cringy situation where I was like, I, I actually cannot watch you slurp your cereal milk one more time. <laughs> if you are married to somebody or if you've been with somebody for a long time, there are going to be icks and you have to understand that like that is part of living with another human you have icks I guarantee you like I have icks that I do sometimes I even give myself the egg I'm like stop that like 
no, we're not doing this. Um, it's just part of life and we put so much pressure on like the, the person that we want to be with, like being perfect and like having like everything about them is just like charming and lovely, lovely and like amazing. And like that might be like for a short amount of time, but like get yourself past the six month mark and like you're going to have to figure out how to live with the icks that that person gives you and like be okay with it and be like, all right, well, I have my own like slew of shit anyways. And so we can work through these. Obviously, like there's some, you know, a body shape. But if you're having that ick, like out of the get go, it's probably not going to work out. Um, bad nails. That's another one of my icks. Like if a guy just like doesn't have, even if it's like toenails, I don't actually want to see your toenails till like we're together for like at least six months. But like, anyways, stay tuned for a whole ick episode. If you, maybe we like submit all of our icks. This would be, well, this is happening. We're submitting all of our icks. Again, I do not stand for icks across the board. Um, in like a long-term relationship, but I do think that it is absolutely fucking hilarious. And I want to hear, actually, I want to hear icks from men and women. So like, I'm going to put up something when, when this comes out, we're going to put up something on YouTube or on, when this comes out, we're going to put up a question box on Instagram. And I want you guys to answer your icks and then ask if you have a spouse, <laughs> if you're so fucking lucky to have a spouse that has icks. Um, I want, I want to hear their icks too. We're going to, we're going to really exploit this topic. Um, okay. Another thing is that I loved about this show is it doesn't always have to make sense on paper. As long as you have two people who are equally committed to figuring out a way to make it work, a lot of relationships don't make sense on paper. And I think that this is really like people have their perfect list of like, who do I want my spouse to be? And like, get really clear on it and all that. And then like the world throws you this curveball, and you're like, well, actually I fell in love with a, a Jewish rabbi who like needs me to be also Jewish. I didn't. That's the show. Um, and it doesn't make sense on paper. And like, that's one of the things they argue with in the show is like, how do we like make this happen? Even though like we're very far off from like what, what this should look like. And I think that it's important to be open-minded. It's important to understand that like life has so many nuances and intricacies and situations differ. And as you get older, especially I'm in 35, like my life is complicated. I have on paper, like it, nothing really makes sense. Like, what am I going to do? Find somebody who has no children? Like that doesn't make sense. Like, welcome to my life where you're a stepdad to five kids. Do I find somebody who has no, like who doesn't want kids? Like that's complicated. Like there's no real way to like shake it out on paper where it's like, oh, this makes perfect sense. Honestly, at this point, I'm like, I feel like maybe just like a widower is my best bet. Like here, let me step into her place. Anyways, I don't actually know what makes the most sense. And I love about that. One of the things I love about this show is it's not so cut and dry like it's their lives are very complicated and um it just like gives them space to figure it out and um you know elaborates on like the complications of that but also like just be both of them being open to like I don't know how it's going to work but we're going we love each other and like there is a depth here that like we're not willing to forego for like just basic things you see this all the time like people marry people from different states or different countries even like overseas like how do we get a visa like all of these things it's it is complicated and that's okay if you have two people who are willing to to put the work in and say like I want to make this work I love you so much so anyways I didn't fully anticipate on doing a whole episode about this show but then I watched it and I was like well we have to do a deep dive if you guys want to discuss further please like send me a dm or leave a comment on youtube or wherever like I loved this show so much I've watched it twice now and it just like did something therapeutic to my heart it was re revived my like thought of like wow you can find somebody it's not like impossible and again while I might look a little bit different or it might be like a little shaky from time to time like there is <laughs> there is really love out there even though it's fake and it's on Netflix <laughs> um so anyways go watch the show and thank you for listening to another episode Thanks for listening to The Summer of Me. You can listen to episodes on Spotify, Apple, or wherever you listen to podcasts, or you can watch on YouTube. Come hang out and follow my chaos on Instagram at Kendra for now. See you next time.